Hello and a very good welcome. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Williams and in this particular video I want to demonstrate Visual Studio Blend. Now Visual Studio Blend is a sort of, I don't want to call it an extension of Visual Studio. I see it more as a version. It's kind of a different version of, of Visual Studio. It has a few bells and whistles to do with um, XAML design and in this case 3D. So without much further ado, let's get straight into this video. What I'm going to show you guys today is how to um, get a shape, an object in this particular case. This geometry is a teapot. And just as a quick side note, if you want to add any kind of complex geometry, as long as you have the geometry stored as an object file as I do here, you can just simply drag and drop it from your file um, directory and it should come up. So that's been done here, if I'm not too mistaken. It's been a while since I loaded this file, this project. So um, just going from memory. And so now that we have our geometry here, what I want to do is to actually put a texture on it. And before I show you guys how to do that, I will just explore some of these controls. So here we have click and drag to pan. So obviously I can drag around the scene, change the perspective a little bit by moving around the teapot. I've got my selection view, which I can use then to translate this um, particular object, this teapot. So I'm going to go ahead. I think there's a way to get a gizmo. I'm not sure if, if it's going to work. Yeah, here we go. Let's, click, let's select the whole thing. And I'm just going to freely move my teapot around in space. I can select the arrows to, ooh, yeah, you can select parts of the mesh, which, you know, has its uses. Or you can, if your aim is good, you can explore what these controls do. Uh, I'll just go through what they do in terms of speaking it out. So you can click and drag to pan, zoom, position the camera, transform the active object, transform the active object around, it, around its pivot point. There's a couple things you can do. There's a few things. So it's quite interesting to see. But the main thing I want to demonstrate, I want to show you guys in this video, is actually how to UV map onto this um, object. And UV mapping is rather difficult in a sense with Visual Studio, um, in the, only in the sense that you have to mainly do things from scratch if you're working with 3D, say with the viewport 3D, or maybe with um, the DirectX 11 um, slash DirectX 12 project type for XAML, um, DirectX 11 for XAML, excuse me, or DirectX 12, you know, for C++, Visual C++. Now, this particular piece of software, Visual Studio Blend, has a quite a handy tool to allow you to UV map without much effort uh, as doing it from scratch. And before I do that, I want to see if I can actually import a slightly different geometry just to keep things a little bit more simple. Let me see if I can load a sphere, which should be somewhere. Then you should be met with this kind of window. I'm going to go ahead and select a sphere and the sphere appears in the view. We're just gonna move back a little bit so we can see it properly. That's not too bad. Uh, maybe I can move this teapot out of the way. But anyway, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna see if I do bear with me. So anyway, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my selection tool. I'm gonna actually, before I do that, I'm gonna just right click. I'm gonna click on apply. No, excuse me, view material. View material, which is right now on Fong. And what that should do is bring me to this really interesting node view. Now I'm going to go ahead and move around and just show you what's going on here. So if I hold control and, and slide my mouse wheel, I can zoom in here. And I got a preview of some of the parameters I was setting here. So here I was experimenting with a default texture that's provided, which is called Lambert. This is the Lambert one that came up actually, if I'm not mistaken or something else, I'm not too sure, because Lambert seems to show else something else. But anyway, this is the UV map node, and if we look to our left here on the toolbox, there's a bunch of different uh, functions, and there's a bunch of different nodes that we could place in our node view canvas. So I'm just going to zoom out quickly. What I'm going to do, just to, ex just to demonstrate the, the nodes themselves, let's go for this parallax UV. Don't really know what it does, but let's just see how it looks. So this is a parallax UV node, and it can be attached actually via the inputs and the outputs to other nodes. Don't know what it does, so I will just play around here because that specular node there is not attached to anything. Let's see what happens if we attach. Oh, something happened. I'm not sure what it was, but something changed there. Like it looks a little different. I don't know. But um, uh, yeah, that's the um. 
that's what happens when you attach these nodes different things happen um it's kind of like a different way it's like a visual script right so you have your uv map and that's going into um the multiply which i think this multiply add is a blend mode it's a it's a technique for blending and then you eventually get to your final color the final texture i'm going to just zoom in here now i want to change that so i'm going to go ahead and in order to change the texture to your liking all you have to do is click on the texture node and you'll see on the right hand side i have my properties view i'm going to go ahead here and i'm going to select this button and i'm going to select from the directory the texture that i want okay so now what i'm going to do i'm good now that i'm back in this object view i'm going to click on the object the target object that i want to apply so what am i going to do to apply the texture i'm going to click on the sphere i'm going to go ahead and click effect and that will open this um these set of fields i'm going to go ahead and change my current effect by clicking on the button and i'm going to change that to one of my own liking And there you have it, as you can see, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit. The texture has been applied to the sphere. So this is a very quick demonstration on expression blend, some of, some of its 3D capabilities, um, which is actually quite impressive. I'm not too sure how deep and how robust you can find this software. It seems to be able to do the sort of things that you find Blender. Some of the things Blender can do, you can kind of see that this thing can do as well, uh, Visual Studio Blend. So um, I will probably have my eye on this software. I'll be experimenting what it can do. And it's quite ironic that this particular project is to do with a 3D modeling style project that I had in mind, albeit I was using Viewport 3D for the 3D modeling. As if I go to my um, Solution Explorer, you can see some of the files here. However, this is, I believe, using DirectX, actually. I, I noticed that one of the render, um, the render styles you can do, the graphics engine, you can select D3D11 or D3D11 warp, warp. Is it warp? Yeah, I think it's warp. And I think this is just a software um, based driver um, for technique for rendering the 3D, if I'm not mistaken. But right now it's set to D3D, D3D11 right now. So it, it seems to be DirectX powered, which is quite cool. So I'm going to probably end the video here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found it somewhat informative. If you did enjoy what you what you saw, do keep stay tuned to the channel as I do like to upload videos with regards to video games, graphics, 2D and 3D. Thanks very much for watching and I bid you a great day. Bye bye.